James chapter 3. James chapter 3, starting at verse 1. And tonight, I want to speak to you about the taming of the tongue. Mm, come on. Or we can say, Christian folk speak with pork tongue. Amen. There are... Uh, Aesop's fable states that once upon a time a donkey found a lion skin and he tried it on. He strutted around and frightened many animals. Soon a fox came along and the donkey tried to scare him too. But the fox, hearing the donkey's voice, said, If you want to terrify me, you'll have to disguise your voice. And the moral of the story is you may disguise a fool, but his words will always give him away. Mm. He made this guy a fool, but his words will always give him away. In James chapter 3, starting at verse 1, not many of you should presume to be teachers and brothers because you know that we teach and will be judged more strictly. We all stumble in many ways if anyone is never at fault. And when he says, he's a perfect man, able to keep his whole body in check. When we put bits into the mouths of horses and make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal or take ships as an example. Although they are so large, they are driven by, uh, and are driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder. Wherever the pilot wants it to go, likewise the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider the great forest is set up uh, um, on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, a world, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole person, sets the whole course of its life on fire, and itself set on fire by the uh, Father in the name of Jesus, Lord. I pray, Father, that right now you would just increase as I decrease, and Lord, that you would help me, Lord, to... Father, convey, convey your word unto the people, O Lord, and I pray, God, that you would just continue to have your way this evening, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. and amen, hallelujah. In, uh, sorry, in, in uh, uh, come on, let me do this one, amen, here we go. There was a statistic that, I, that uh, was conveyed to me in well, how I got in this. Do you know that the average person speaks 11 million words a year? 11 million words a year. Now, and if, you, if, you, if that is the case, by the age of 69, we have, have spoken 715, no, nope, I'm wrong. That's not a million. Yeah, I'm sorry. 715 million words by the age of 69. 715 million. Even as I'm speaking now, it adds to the tally. That we continually, continually speak. You know, in Proverbs 18, 21, it says, Life and death are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will, will eat its fruit. The taming of the tongue, you know, the, the, the words matter to God. Can you say amen? amen? In Matthew 12, 36, it says, I tell you that on the day of judgment, people will, will have to account for every careless word they speak. Every careless word. Amen. And our, our tongue, amen, we're, we're so quick at times. Amen. We're so quick to say and to do, or we're so quick to, 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 just set people, man, or set ourselves, or whatever it is, amen. We set it on that course, amen, of either life or death, of destruction or building, amen. And sometimes, amen, we need to understand, you know, just like our text in James, we put such a small bit in a horse's mouth, and a horse weighs more than a man. Can you say amen? amen. You know, and, and, but yet with that small bit, we can steer the horse. If you ever seen an aircraft carrier, one of the biggest 
uh, ships, amen, the United States Navy or any Navy really has. It's a, port, uh, it's a floating fortress. It contains 5,500 sailors in its vessel. Not to mention, amen, over 100 aircraft, not to mention food, not to mention water, not to mention ammunition, and not to mention lifeboats and all of that. It has all of that, but yet, if you see how it is steered, compared to what, how, what the size of the boat is, it's a small rudder that steers it. It makes it go left or right, and the steering wheel compared, amen, uh, they call it a helm, the steering wheel compared to the entire ship is so small, but yet that is what they use to steer it. It's the same thing the Bible says with our tongue. Such a small little thing, but yet it is so deadly. It is so deadly, amen. Now, some of us can attest, amen, when we were youngsters and how many names we were called. And how many, you know, how many put downs, amen, that, that were taken up to us that it affected us years later. It affected the way we thought. It affected the way we studied. It affected the way we acted, amen. And, you know, it affected everything about us, amen. And one thing that we have to understand, man, we need to tame the tongue. And some of the things are really simple. For one thing, amen, we, we need to understand, man, we got to stop using attack words or words in attack mode. Come on. You know, sometimes we can be, you know, so cool and we, we, we even the way we bring out things, you know, instead of, you know, hey, did you do that? Did you do that? The simple, you know, little, you know, it's the same word, but it's the simple things like that. Hey, man, hey, did you do what I tell you to do? Did you do what I tell you to do? You know, we want to attack. We don't know how, you know, some of us, we, like I said, maybe in our, in, in our younger years, you know, we were always yelled at, and we don't know how to convey that in a, in, in a more smoother way. We don't know how to do that in a, in a way where, you know, it is, uh, you know, a simple question can turn into a huge argument. And all of a sudden, you know, you realize, man, how did I get here? You know, you, you know, you can come, be in the, in the best mood, and it may not mean anything. You come through the door, you say, "Well, guess what happened now?" Uh. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> you know, I, I had a neighbor, amen, and he would come in and he would tell me, man, he we would sit at our, uh, you know, we used to live in Echo Park uh, Avenue, and he would come in and go, "Now, go, what's wrong?" Because, man, every time I come home, man, man, the first thing she wants to hit me with, do you know what your son did? <laughs> do you know what your son did? Do you know what your son did? Yeah, man, I said, man, you know what? Well, you know, maybe you just tell her, you know, what? Let, me, let me breathe, and then you can tell me everything that he did. And, you know, as dads, man, you know, we, we, turn, we tend to look at that, and sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. You know what your son did? What did he do? Well, he climbed a tree and started throwing down the fruits from the tree and started hitting the neighbors. I didn't know that guy could climb. <laughs> and yet, you know, we, the wife would be looking at that and saying, man, that is so dangerous, man. The guy could have done this and the guy could have done that. You know, it's a matter of perspective. But the words we use, the things we say matter. Yes. Even the little ones, even the things, amen, and how we say it, amen. Now, do we attack most of the time? Think about it. Think about your conversations. Amen. Think about those times, amen, where maybe something took place and, or maybe a, 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 an argument ensued because it was just a little misunderstanding, a little mishap, a little word, amen. Maybe you weren't having a good day. You know, maybe everybody was screaming at you at work and then you get home and everybody's screaming there too. Or maybe you did have a good day, Amen. And then all of a sudden, you know, somebody said something wrong or somebody, man, called you a bozo when you're driving the freeway. So I'm no clown. And then it just sets you off because, you know, man, you know what? You can't call me that. And it's those little words and those things. The Bible says, man, that can catch you, that will set you on course for hellfire. We can lose it. Amen. You know that phrase, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. That's a lie. Because <laughs> words do hurt. Words hurt more, amen. You know, the thing about it is, you can hit me with a sticks and stones, and they may, may, they may break my bones, and, man, and, and I'll heal. But those words, amen, that penetrate the spirit, that penetrate the heart, that penetrate the soul, it takes years to heal. Yes. It may take a lifetime to heal. 
And yet sometimes, man, in our conversations, we really don't know that we're doing it, do we? We really don't understand, amen, uh, you know, some of the gravity of our words at times. Why? Because our conversation's still narrative. To this day, our conversation still, amen, gets us into a place where, you know, well, that didn't go over too well. Well, I didn't mean it that way. You know, it's something that, uh, you know, my wife told me, you know, years ago, she says, what you mean and what you say can be two entirely different things. Oh, come on. You know, so you got to be careful with your words. You got to be careful on how you speak it and how you say it and, you know, how the other person perceives it. Because I can, I can have a conversation in my mind. Have you ever done this? You know, uh, husband, wives, have you ever done this? Have you ever had an argument with your spouse in your mind? Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Have you ever said, and then she'll say this, and I'll say this. Yeah. Yeah. And then I'll say this, and she'll say this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then you go home, and then uh, you know, you want, you're hoping that it go towards the script, but it never does. <laughs> you know, they say something totally off the wall, and you're like, oh, man, well, that ruined it. You know? <laughs> That would ruin it out, you know. No, no, you were supposed to say this, so I can say this. You weren't supposed to do that. What are you talking about? I had the whole thing in my mind. And I won this one in my mind, you know. <laughs> you know, and, 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 but, you know, those words that we say, then, 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 then when you get there, you're like, well, well that's totally off. That's totally gone. And, then, and so all of a sudden, man, it didn't go the way you wanted, so now it's an all out warfare. It's an attack. The attack words come out. Those things you don't really need to say, but you know, because of the heated moment. That's why, you know, I've tried my best, amen, not to speak randomly or, out, or outwardly or really fast. I want to think what I say. I want to be sure, amen, that I don't, you know, that I'm not angry when I speak, that I'm not upset because. Then it becomes a shouting match or becomes something more hurtful than just that. All of a sudden it just becomes just a full blown, okay, that's it. You stay on your side, I'm going to stay on my side. This is the line of the bed here. Don't you dare cross it. <laughs> Come on. You know what I mean? You know, don't you name me. You know what? Well, don't touch me. You know, and, 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 and for what? And then when you replay it, you know, later on, you're like, why? Why? What's the place? What happened? And the thing about it is, is that really, you know, things when they, you know, I, 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 and I understand, I understand sometimes there's, you know, things that need to be said, there's bad blood, man, you just got to release, you just got to like, ah, you know, and then, but you know what, you know, those are the times, man, that, that, that they shouldn't be, they're just petty. You know, there are many times, amen, that, you know, that, that my wife would get mad at me, you know, so she's just mad. She's just mad. I get that way. I just get, you just, it's just one of those days, you just get mad. Mm. And I can't take it personal. I can't say, oh, she doesn't love me while I'm leaving, bye. <laughs> you know, everybody goes to those moments. Yeah. But even then, we can control on what we say. Yeah. We can control on how we say it. We can minimize, amen, the anger. We can minimize, amen, the destruction, amen. Because sometimes, amen, you know, we, we can get really out of hand. And it becomes really, really in a place where, you know, you're just, you're in a dangerous place, my friend. If you let words continue, amen, just being thrown out there without any kind of discipline, without any kind of, uh, 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 you know, of, of, of thought, without any kind of, and you're just letting it go. Because later on, it'll come back to haunt you. Later on, amen, whoever you said that to is in their heads, amen. I still remember today, I am 54 years old, and this happened when I was in junior high. I came home, amen, I had a 95 on my math test, 95. I'm about 95 in algebra, Jack, 95. Man, I went to my sister, man, you know, 95. She turns around and said, you were one question away from 100, what happened? <laughs> well, I was kind of hoping you'd give me five bucks. <laughs> it's not for 95. Really? That wasn't good enough? 95? Oh. 95? What'd you get? I got a 95. How many other people got a 95? Oh, well. <laughs> 
I'm 54, I still remember that. I still remember that. Now, some of you say, yeah, I wish I would have got a 95 or anything. <laughs> you know, but let's do it this way. What about those things that still affect you to this day? That one word. Maybe it was dummy. Maybe it was dummy. Whatever. You know, I don't, I'm not, I'm not going to bring up old one, but remember, <laughs> amen, that was just a word. That was just a word. Now, I mean, come on, man. I would have just, you know, I could have just changed and taken that. Well, if you're not happy about it, I am. You know, forget you. I got 95 so there. But apparently not. And sometimes, church, amen, we have to, you know, not something, but we have to be careful. Yes. Because people are coming in and they are wounded. Some of us, amen, we're still suffering wounds from years ago. And it comes up in the most inopportune time. It comes up, amen, when you want to witness to somebody. It comes up, amen, when you want to have a conversation. It comes up, amen, when you want to move forward and the devil comes up to you and says, remember when? Remember this. Remember you were called this. Remember this has happened. Remember this. Remember what was said. Remember this and remember that. You know, it's an amazing thing because we can take these words. And yes, there are people, amen, who are strong enough to take any kind of negativity, turn it around, amen, and use it for their own good to push them forward. Some of us, amen, and I'll give you, I'll give you a, a good uh, uh, example. If somebody were to come up, amen, when we were sinners and everything else, and we used to be around bars, and then they put a bottle in front of us and tell us, I bet you you can't drink that whole bottle. Oh, yeah, watch me. You know, we do it. Man, you know, you turn that name, you know, I bet you you can't. I bet. But at times, church, you know, when the, those things become, man, man, you'll never amount to anything. You'll never be anything. And we get to that, man, and we don't turn it around. Maybe we don't have that residue. We can turn it around and say, you know what, I'll show you. Yet, amen, being in that pit of saying, well, you know what, maybe you're right. So why bother? Why bother? I remember, amen, people telling me, you know, I uh, remember hearing a sermon, and, amen, and the pastor said, you know what, not everybody in this church is going to make it to heaven. And I remember hearing people say, well, well if I'm not going to make it, then why bother? Man, why try? You know, forget it. Then I might just go out and live in the world. But yeah, if you take that same individual, man, and you tell them, man, you know what, I bet you you can't do this world-wise, they'll try to prove you wrong. I bet you you can't smoke this whole baggie by yourself. Oh, yes, I can. Watch me. Boy, I bet you you can't do it. Oh, yes, I can. You see how words can come and affect you, but how we can turn them as well. But not everybody can do that. No. Better be on the safe side and understand, amen, that attack words happen. And sometimes people attack because they're attacked. And it's our defense mechanism. Somebody says something to us, we automatically say something back to them. But what does the word of God say? It says, man, a kind word turns away wrath. But because, man, we've been hurt, we've been, you know, it's like somebody touching that wound, amen, that's still fresh, you're like, hey, that hurts. You know, if somebody touches something that hurts, man, how many of us, man, we don't react like, oh, wow, man, thank you. We react like, me, hey, man, <laughs> what are you doing? That still hurts, you see it open. And we still, we still, we still. We still react that way. Understand, church, man, if we can contain our attack words, believe me, people will contain theirs. If we can contain, amen, what we say, then we're on our way to taking the time. Another thing that we have to understand, amen, and we love this one, man, we need to refrain from gossip. Come on. We need to be careful about the news we share concerning others. Someone once said, "There's only one thing. Uh, there's only there's only one thing as difficult as unscrambling an egg, and that's unspreading a rumor, unspreading gossip. Gossip is destructive. It is, and it hurts relationships between brother and sister in the church." Listen, if you don't know, that's why fellowship, at, you know, it, it's important to get to know one another. Yeah. You know, if someone were to come and tell me, you know, hey, I see your wife over, here, oh, oh, over there at Jack in the Box, man, and she was with somebody. I think you should check that out. Well, yeah, that was a cousin, and I know about it. 
<laughs> what are you tripping on? But imagine, if it was, you know, if, if, if I didn't, imagine, amen, if I let gossip in, amen, and, and all these things were said about her. Hey, I see you wife with a guy, he's in, he was in, she was in Jack and oh, what? Man, she better have a good explanation. She better, you know. But let me put it to you this way. Doesn't that happen in church when somebody says something about your brother and sister, you don't rebuke them right away. You don't tell me, hold on, man. Are you sure? Yeah. Then maybe we should go. Let's go talk to him about it. Yeah, Are you sure? <laughs> Let's see this. Let's do that. Yeah. We don't. Yeah. Why? Because we like that itchy. We like that. Itchy. Really? She did what? They did what? They were where? What's the place? And the thing about that, amen, is that it spreads undetected because it's from idle conversation. In other words, you know, you could be talking to somebody, and maybe, man, you didn't believe it. There's no way that's that. But in idle conversation, oh, yeah, man, oh, yeah, I heard this too. And that individual that you said it to, man, says, oh, yeah, really? Okay. It was like that commercial. Then they'll tell two friends, and they'll tell two friends, and they'll tell two friends. And before long, amen. It's all over the place. We got to be careful, amen. We have to cut gossip, amen, about listening to gossip, about gossiping, amen. In Proverbs 20, 19, it says, the one who reveals secrets is a constant, is a constant gossip. Avoid someone with a big mouth. Avoid someone with a big mouth. The one who reveals secrets is constant gossip. Avoid someone with a big mouth. Yeah. They're always, always gossiping, man. It's one of those things, hey, man, cut it out, man. I don't want to hear it. Mm -hmm. If you have something against that brother, if you have something against that sister, you go talk to him. Come on. You got something against Pastor, go talk to him. You got something yeah. against Sister Veronica, go talk to her. Right. Don't let this spread. Don't let this happen. Don't let this, you know, man, don't, you know, I, I, I'll sit in somebody, man, if somebody's telling me something, go, are you sure? Then why don't I call him into the office and we can talk about it? Oh, well, you know what? We don't need to. Yeah. Come on. And I suggest you don't say anything at all. Because yeah. apparently you don't want to do that. Proverbs 16, 28 said, A contrary man spreads conflict and, a goss and, and gossip separates friends. Right. Come on. It does. You know, I've been there. Amen. I've had, you know, people, men who I grew up in the church with. We st stood side by side in the same battle. We shed blood together spiritually. Amen. We, we prayed for one another. We were there for one another. And then one day to have them talk so rudely of me, man, it hurt. Man, and I went to, the, you know, and I went to my pastor. I said, I can't believe that happened. I can't believe that, you know, that they did that. I said, why are they so bitter? What, what did I do? You know, and, and, and really, there's nothing, you know, there, there, there was no specific answer. They were just bitter. They were on the way out. And them being on the way out, amen, they wanted to do just a little bit more than just leave. Come on. You know, and apparently, you know, I, I was a target. You know, I've had people, I've had leaders do that to me. I've had leaders tell me, you know, man, well, he's a little like this and he's a little like that, you know. I've, I've had close friends that I found out, amen, that when they found out I was going to marry my, you know, marry my wife, they were like, oh, my goodness, this and oh, man, she's going to like, really? I thought you'd be happy for me. I thought you'd be, I thought you'd be instead, I thought you'd come up and say, man, congratulations, you finally found somebody that'll stick with you, huh? <laughs> Well, yeah, man, you know, she's willing, you know, what the heck, oh, you know, somebody ought to give her a medal. No, they didn't, man, and we're like, I was like, really? Wow, that's interesting. You know, and, and listen to me, guys, you know, and those words that were said, they could never take them back. Yeah, that's right. One man said, he made, one pastor said, uh, when a, one of his congregation members came after spreading rumors and gossip about him, Ask the pastor for forgiveness, and the pastor said, take this feathered pillow, and I want you to cut it open. 
And she did so. And then I said, I want you to go outside. And it was a windy day. And I said, now I want you just to spread the feathers out. And as she did, she looked at the pastor and wondered why she was told to do that. And it finally became evident when the pastor told her, now go and pick up every single feather that was spread out. And she said, that's an impossible task, pastor. And which to he replied, so were your words to be brought back again. Once it's out there, it's out there. There's nothing that we can say. There's nothing that we can do. Amen. You know, there's, uh, there, when, when those hurtful things are said out loud, they really are said out loud. And it, rep, it echoes in times of eternity. It echoes in wounds, amen, that are kept open. It echoes, amen, in hearts, amen, that are constantly broken. It echoes, amen, in complexes in people. And it needs to be dealt with. Man, don't worry about it, man. I got a solution, amen. Transforming the tongue begins with a change in the heart. Jesus said, amen, in Matthew 15, 18. But what comes out of the mouth comes from the heart. And this defile, defiles a man. It's a changing of the heart. Changing, amen, who we are. Changing, amen, uh, how we speak to people. How many of us, amen, used to cuss them like anything, man? Yeehaw. You know, I mean, every other word, you know, you're talking about, man, you use words that nobody else knew. You know, people used to take, you know, write down, well, what the heck was that? <laughs> you know, I had a friend, he, uh, he actually, uh, uh, well, you know, he was a good guy. Uh, I would say he was on the verge of getting saved, amen, but what happened was he was a roofer, amen, and he fell off. And he fell off, amen, and he fell to the ground, and he was, you know, in pain, and he was just rolling around the ground. I go, what's the you know, and I'm over there, and I'm, are you all right? Well, what are you doing? He says, man, I'm trying to think of the most harshest cuss word I can get. I can come out right now, man. And he ends up with rat fink. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, that's it? Goes, yeah, that's all I got. <laughs> Pray that, amen. And you, you must be saved, amen. That's uh, that's. That's all I can think of right now. Is it, and I guess I'll take it. Yeah, you know. And some of us, amen, we, we used to cuss up a storm. We, you know, it, it was an adjective, amen. You know, we, that was a description for everything, man. You know, amen, it, it, it was everything. You know, we, we used to use it like, you know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, it, it just was there. So, but guess what? We were able to change that. God was able to change that. Now, even, even man, our slang is different. We don't call it money, we call it finances. <laughs> we don't call it hanging out, we call it fellowship. <laughs> you know? Yeah, you know it, 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 it changes, amen. The way we speak, why? Because of who we gather with. Who we're around. And it plays a big part on how you say things or how you're brought up to say things. It's who you hang out with. The Bible says, amen, do not be deceived, amen. Bad morals corrupt good judgment. Yes. Come on. You know, and, and those things, man, when you're hanging around with people, man, you know, that's why at work it's so important, man, if these people are cussing up a storm or telling dirty jokes, don't be in the middle. Come on. You know, don't be over there going, man, oh, I heard that when you did. You know, I thought you were saying, <laughs> yeah, go something like this. <laughs> and you finish it off. You know, don't, you know, let, let your light shine where they see you and they're like, you know, and they'll realize, you know, you're not one to be trifled with. You're not one to be talked about. You're not one to be talked at in that certain manner. Why? Because then we get in our hearts ready, amen, and it defiles, amen. It, it makes, uh, not defiles, but it, 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 it gives us a definition of how we speak out of the abundance of the heart. Out of the abundance of the heart. You know, what is in there? Is it a lot of bitterness? And guess what? A lot of bitterness comes out. Back in our text in James chapter 3, amen. We can control the tongue. If you can control the tongue, you can control the man. As in verse 3, amen, of our text, when, you, when a bit, that small bit, can control a horse. And if our, we can control our tongue, we can control our person. 
You can control ourselves, amen. Illustrated by the rudder, amen, that I've mentioned, amen. Big things come from this tongue. Big things. The power of life. I mean, imagine that. The power of life and death are in the tongue. The power to bring somebody up or to tear them down. Amen. There was a, a, a movie, amen, a show, and, I, the, the, and the quotation I got was that, man, uh, they, they were talking about being bullied. And this guy was twice the size of the one being, of the one doing the bullying. So it was a big guy that was being bullied, and the small guy was the one bullying. And he said, and, people, and they asked him, why couldn't you just crush him? He goes, you don't understand, he bullied by the mind games. He bullied by the words he said. And, man, and it affected the way I thought. He used to call me names, man, and I was so weak that I didn't think that I could ever beat him. How many times has the devil put words inside your head, amen, saying that you've already been defeated? Yeah. Those words, amen, that are imparted in your heart that you don't even want to try to fight anymore. That we come to a place, amen, of our final rest where it says, well, you know what? If I can't do it, then I won't do it. If I can't live right, then I won't live right. Maybe this church thing, you know, how, how many of us, amen, has come to that fork on the road? Maybe this church thing isn't for me. You know, yeah, maybe getting drunk, getting loaded, and, you know, and messing around. Maybe that's for you. <laughs> you know, maybe, man, bringing, bro, maybe, maybe being insane. Maybe spending 25 lakh in prison. Is that you? Come on, how to. Is that you? No, it's not us. No, it's not. So when the enemy comes, well, maybe this church thing, maybe this God thing isn't for you. That those words that are put in our hearts that will embed in our, embed in our minds, man, we play on that. He plays on that. I like what this one comedian said. He stated, he said, that he said, I'll never cheat on my wife. And he says, I'll give you the reason why. Is because one day I was laying down. It was early morning. I had my daughter in my, uh, I had my daughter in bed with me and I was hugging her. She was about three years old and my wife went to make breakfast for us. And I said to myself, I will never do anything foolish to destroy this. And so he goes on, amen, to say, you know, as he, you know, got, you know understand he's not saved. As he goes on to say that he would walk into a bar and even when a woman would look at him, he would yell out, I don't cheat on my wife! And he would casually walk away. <coughs> Afterwards, he would state, she probably had no interest in me whatsoever. But I know if I yell that out, the words already made its point. <laughs> the words already would have made its point. Imagine if we did that to the devil and said, you are not going to defeat me today. You know, you know what? I will have control over my tongue today. I will control on how I say things and what it, and, and, and how it's being said and, and what is being said. Imagine that. I mean, you know, this guy would go away and say, I'm going to cheat my way. And just calmly just walk away. And people would be like, what the heck is he saying? He said, well, the words are out. And they know. So the devil will know too. Amen. And we can, we can build or destroy. Let us build better things than destroying them. Better than anything else, the tongue displays the state of our hearts. If you're always speaking negatively, what is in your heart? We hear about faith and we hear about this, but how are we really when it comes down to us? Do we have the faith to move mountains? Or is it for brother so-and-so or sister so-and-so or just them or just for the pastor and their family? You know? Let's call the pastor. He has enough faith, man. He'll pray, man. Watch. The Red Sea will spill. Mm -hmm. No, you too. That's right. But how is your faith? How are you speaking your faith? Come on. How are you speaking, amen, the blessings of God? Today I had a good prayer this morning, man. I woke up this morning and I had every intention to get up really early. Mm -hmm. I had every intention because my mind said, I'm going to go work out. <laughs> I'm going to go work out, I mean, you know, I'm going to go work out because I got church tonight. It's going to be very difficult for me to work out tonight, so I'm going to work out this morning. I set my alarm. Man, I even woke up before my alarm. Man, I looked at my clock and I said, oh, man, it's early. Man, all right. Father, in the name of Jesus, help me today. 
My alarm went off. My alarm went off. And, and, and this, here are the words that I said to me. You got your clothes ready for work? No. But you know you got to go iron them. Then you got to get your gym clothes. Then you got to get your shoes. And you got to do that. You got to put that aside. Oh, and then, you know, you got to do coffee because you got to get up. So you got to go water. <laughs> oh, don't forget, you got to get some protein drink because after you work out, you need the protein drink. I was tired before I even got out of bed. <laughs> all the things, all of a sudden, all the lists, all the lists that I had, all of a sudden just exhausted me. I talked myself out of the again. I reached for my alarm clock. It said 4.40 a.m. I went, pat, 6.15. <laughs> and then I turned around, and then hit snooze three times just for good measure. We, I, I, seriously, I, I have every intention. We have every intention to do more for God. But sometimes, in other words, we speak unto ourselves, talk us out of a blessing. Why do you think that God told the children of Israel, when you march around the city of the, the, the walls of Jericho, don't say a word? Why? Because, man, we can talk ourselves out of a blessing. We can talk ourselves big time out of a blessing. I'm sure the people who are you know, walking around Jericho, I'm sure, man, one of them wanted to say, why are we doing this? And I'm sure, man, as they're walking, when an individual is going to say something, another brother says, shut up. Shut up. We're not supposed to say anything. Just shut up. <laughs> this is what God said to do. Let's do it. Let's do this. Come on. Man, but shut up. God said, don't say a word, man. Let's just do this. And can you imagine on the seventh day, marching around seven times? And then God would say, now just shout. That's it? That's it. Just shout. Just speak out loud the victory that God has given us. Amen. I don't know what they said, but, I, you know, maybe one of them, you know, a few of them yelled, you know, walls fall down, you know, hallelujah, whatever it was. It was a big shout, and the walls of Jericho came tumbling down. See, when we speak the right words, when we speak, amen, with the right attitude, when we speak, amen, those words that build up, guess what? The enemy's walls fall down. Yeah, come on. The enemy's walls have no defense against us. Can you say amen? amen. The enemy, amen, uh, cannot harm us in a way, man, where those wounds will not mend or will not go. Why? Because, man, we have been built up. We've been built up. What is the word of God says, amen, by, by the blood of the Lamb, the power of our testimony, our words, and who we were. Just realizing that you're not that individual anymore. Amen. But yet, man, battling that, saying that, you know what, this is what you'll ever be. Those words, church, those words, amen, that may not amount to much, amen, but in the end, they amount to great things. Yes. They amount, amen, whether we can make it or not. Now, listen to me. Yes, there are words of rebuke. Learn how to take it. Listen to me. If you can dish it out, take it. Mm, come on. Take it. If you're wrong, you're wrong. I'm not talking about God rebuking us, amen, in a sense, man. In a sense where you know, oh, 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 man, you're harsh. You, you are the harsh, Lord. <laughs> I'm not talking, I'm talking about, man, words that we say to one another and where, you know what, man, come on, you can do this. Now, granted, some people just don't want to be encouraged. Come on. No matter what you say, they always find something else to grab about. You'll always find, man, they'll, they'll find the great cloud in the silver lining. They'll snatch defeat out of the jaws of victory. Man, you'll be, you'll be, man, you'll be pumped up, and when you get talking to them, man, it makes you want to commit suicide. <laughs> man, I thought I was good until I talked to you, man. I guess you're right, man. The world's, man, we're going to die. We're going to die. <laughs> we're all going to die. We're just going to die. You know, have you ever encountered somebody like that? You, man, you say something, man, and they're like, yeah, but... 
Hey man, I heard you got a raise. Yeah, but it was only five dollars more, man. Your cost of living went up five fifty. <laughs> really? <laughs> Dude, man, hey man, you got a brand new car. Yeah, but I gotta make the payments. <laughs> Why does the Lord bother to bless you, man, if you're, if you're always that way? Why bother? If you're bummed out because you're not blessed, and you're bummed out because you are blessed, might as well stay not blessed. Amen. Now you're happy. <laughs> you like Schlepp Rock. Amen. That character in the Flintstones, man. Everywhere he goes, there's a dark cloud. You know, it, it, Encourage yourself with the word. Encourage yourself with your words. Man, encourage one another. And let's build the house of God. Let's edify one another. Let's build each other. Let's not stand in the gates of hell, amen, and wonder if we should even be there. This is a battlefield. This is a warfare in which, man, we will go up into the gates of hell and say, you will not prevail. Amen. Amen. And we are part of the armies of the living God. Amen. One thing that I hated, man, when, we, when I was in boot camp, man, is having that one individual that they would make me, you know, we, we had this one guy, man. He's the one that I told the story about, man. He, 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 you know, he was kind of big, and he was mandated to go to, back then, it was called the Robesides. You guys remember that? In the 80s? Well, if you don't, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it was basically just exercising the music. And I remember walking by the, the, the office. The, man, my, my lieutenant called me. Hey, yo, Rick, what? Yeah. He goes, this guy needs to lose some weight. Okay. And I'm walking away. No, 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 no. He's mandated to go on an exercise program. Okay, LT. You got it. Yeah, you yeah, know. No. You're going to make sure that he goes. All right, I'll make sure that he goes. And stay there with him. Man, I have to stay there until he finishes? No, you'll have to do it with him. What are you, crazy? Who and which one of us has to lose weight? Man, me or him? You know, it was him, man. I'm, I'm okay, all right? I'm, and so he goes, and he's out of shape like you wouldn't believe. And he's like, you know, hey, man, hey, dude, what? You know what they said, man, that inside a fat person is a skinny person screaming to get out? Oh, yeah. yeah. He said, inside this fat person? It's a fatter person that says, leave him alone. <laughs> He's on a good track. <laughs> leave him alone. I said, man, you got to get those words out of your head, man. You got to get those words out of your head. If you want to do this, then let's do this. Sometimes we got to convince ourselves, don't we? By our own words. We have to convince ourselves that, you know what? I am going to make it to heaven. Yeah. And I'm going to take a whole bunch of people with me. Amen. But it starts with us. It starts with us taming our tongue. Less attacking, more edifying. <coughs> Less putting down, more building up. Amen. Yeah. More blessings, less cursing. Some of us, men, we curse ourselves. It's time for us, amen, to control this little weapon of ours. Until it shoot life into people, but at the same time, let it shoot death to the enemy. Yeah. It can happen, church. It can happen. Let's do that. Can you say amen? amen? Let's bow our heads, amen. Father, in the name of Jesus.